All right, in this operation, we're going to take the brake lever, move it to the other side, and take the shift lever and move it to this side. So we'll be swapping the, the positions of the brake and shift lever. Also, we'll be replacing the kickstart pawl. The kickstarter doesn't work anymore because there's a little tooth in it called the kickstart pawl. It needs to be replaced. So in this video, we're going to show you how to replace the kickstart pawl as well as do a left to right side shift and brake conversion. So step one is going to be remove the exhaust pipe and muffler. Um, there's nothing holding it on here. It just kind of pressure fits. It's a little rattly. And then there's a nut here, nut here, bolt there, or you can take these two nuts off here. That's your choice. All right, left side of the bike, the shifter lever is here. So if we take a look, we've got to remove this, drive something in there to spread it out and pull the shift lever off this way. And then this is the brake activator here. So we same thing here, loosen this bolt, pop it off here, unhook it from the brake light and from this rod that goes back to the actual brake. There's a cotter pin in the back here that you can pop out to slide this out. And then this is what the arrangement underneath looks like. So this rod here is for the brake. And then the one for the transmission, if I shift gears here, you can see it. That is disgusting. You can see how much slop there is in it. I put washers in there before to shim it out to see if it made it any better, but it really didn't help. So that's how much play there is in it before it even shifts gears. So we want to take this cotter pin off, pop that loose, pull both rods out towards the other side of the bike, towards the right side of the bike, before we open up the transmission. All right, here's your brake lever on the right-hand side. And you can see how it activates that rod going to the other side. We need to loosen up this bolt, maybe drive a screwdriver in there to pry it apart so we can pull this rod out. It's clamped onto the rod. It's got to be the biggest, most inefficient <laughs> dragon on the ground brake lever in the history of motorcycling. All right, so I've removed the bolt from the shifter lever. That one comes off pretty easy. So I've removed, I've removed the bolt down here and I've removed the spring for the uh, brake light sensor. Whoa. All right, on the brake lever side here, I've undone the bolt up there where that hole is, taken that bolt off to liberate this from the rod that it's on, and then I need to unscrew this zerk here, this grease fitting. This washer's welded on here, so I need to unscrew this, and it unscrews just like you would unscrew a bolt. Just spin it. So we've got to get this, this cotter pin out, and then we'll be able to remove the rod, removing this brake lever from it. So with the cotter pin removed, this thing's just going to slide right out like that. So to get the, the brake lever off of this rod, what I'm going to do is line this up pretty straight, put a piece of wood next to it, and then I'm just going to rubber mallet hammer here. And then if the bushing on the far side pushes out, then you've got enough room to lean it over and just pull it out like that. Shift linkage is kind of hard to get to to even show you what I'm doing, but right up in here, there's a nut right here, and you take that off and then slide it to the side to get it off of the shaft there. And then once that's slipped off the side here, then the whole arrangement can kind of drop down and convince to come out. I'm going to pull this cotter pan out here. Right here where the original shift lever was connected, there's a, a snap ring holding it on. So you'll need some kind of a snap ring plier like that to pop it out. All right, so the shift linkage has dropped out. Now I've taken the bike off the center stand to get it out of there. Pull out this cotter pin and then I'll be able to remove most of it. Plop, there you go. So now what I don't know is there's still this thing hanging loose on the bottom, but if I try to slide it out to the side, it bangs up against the engine. So I might have to take the engine out of the frame to remove this but I'm just not that committed to doing that. So I'll probably just put the circlip back on here and just have this thing hang there. It's got, it's got a spring to keep it off the deck, so it's not really gonna bang into anything. It's just gonna hang there and look stupid. All right, on this side, we will remove the bolt holding the kickstarter on and take the kickstart lever off. All right, once that bolt is loose, you might have to hammer a screwdriver in here to pry it apart. In my case, it comes off real easy. Now we're gonna wanna remove this as well, the neutral finder. So grab onto it and just take that middle bolt out of it. So there's a whole stack of goodies here that we want to keep track of. So I'm just going to put it all together down to the side. Now we're going to want to remove the, the screws that hold it together. One, two, three, 
four, five. And once those are loose, like butter, it slides gracefully off. Except for this. We want to unhook the ball from this joint here. That is connected to our clutch cable. Okay, there we go. You'll note that the screws in here are different lengths, so I'm just going to leave them in the cover. I'm going to go back and watch this video in case I forget or one falls out, and we're going to put them to the side. So now we're going to remove the stop plate by removing these two nuts here. I'm Batman. All right, put that down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how the hell am I going to remember how to put this back together? Okay, so this stack I'm going to take out, keep stacked up like a stack. That's here. All right, I've been told that this whole thing with this shaft is supposed to be able to pull out, but in my case it won't, so I've loosened this up. I'm taking this off. There is a circlip right here holding it, keeping it from going that way. All right, so this shifter shaft doesn't want to come out. And the reason it doesn't want to come out is there's two little stoppers here and here. And there's a, a kind of a groove in the shaft that's getting caught on this and that. I guess that's their way of keeping it where it's supposed to be. So now that those things are out of the way, I can move it away from me further. But it's still gonna it's still bumping into the back of this. So I think once I take this cover off, that's gonna come out this way. Alright, so let's proceed. We're gonna take this and this off to remove this. That has a spring built into the back of it, but there's no tension on it. It just comes right out. Now, we're going to take the bolts loose that hold this outer cover on. So there's there, there, one, two. There's a flat one here that you might easily miss. This one's flat-headed, so it could fit behind that thing we just took off. And then here and here. Now, before we take these loose, I know that this on this bike, the transmission is full of grease, so it's not going to make too much of a drippy mess, but there's a drain plug down here, so if, you, if yours is full of oil, which is unlikely, but if it is full of oil, then you want to drain the oil before you do this or you'll get a big mess. I'm going to take this nut and washer off as well. All right, so with all that loose, I, you might need to take a, uh, something like a 2x4 from the other side of the motorcycle and hit it with a hammer, pushing it this way. I'm removing this spring here on the kicker lever. Ow! Alright, that's loose. And I'm going to put this on the new cover. All right, I'll take the spring off. I also need to remove this nut, which is left hand thread. So, to loosen it, you turn it the way you would turn it to tighten it. So, turn it clockwise to loosen it there is a locking tab that I have to pry back down before I can take this nut off. Also, when you turn this, it's going to turn the engine over, so it would be ideal if your engine was in gear and you had the brakes on or, or you know, put a, put a stick through the spokes or something to keep the back wheel from turning. All right, now I was able to get it loose pretty easily once I lowered that tab down. I'm using a 21 millimeter socket here. All right, so then we take off the lock washer this plate, and then, dot, 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 we pull this mother scratcher off. Oh, revealing the glorious transmission. I'm pulling my clutch cue. Oh, disgusting. Good lord. Gross. <laughs> There's chunks of grease coming out. Yeah. All right, we spin it around. Behold the kickstart Paul. This is the reason we went in here in the first place. The uh, you can see the I don't know how well you can see that, but the the tooth is broken off here, so that's why I wasn't able to kickstart it. That tooth is gone, so we got to put a new one in there while we're doing all this other nonsense. All right, with that cover out, we can pull this mother scratcher out. Discard it. That'll make my bike lighter. I will win a lot of races now that this big heavy thing is not in the in the linkage anymore. This was our shift linkage, bringing the shift power from left to right, so we don't need that anymore. Bye bye. And at the same time, I'm going to take out these big long bolts here that were 
acting as guides to keep that rod in there. There's nothing leaked out when I took them out and they're not attaching anything to the frame. So I think their only purpose was to keep that rod from slipping out one way or the other. You can let me know if I'm wrong. Now this of course is a good time to check the gearbox and see if there's any you know any chunks of metal floating around in here if you're missing any teeth or if anything's drastically radically wrong on the new cover we're going to put in a seal that will allow us to run oil instead of grease and that way i'll be able to change the oil regularly and keep it a lot cleaner and the gears will be a lot happier all right so here's all the parts we got the new outer the old outer the new inner and the old inner so I'm going to leave the shifter mechanism in the old one because the, the kit came with the new one. Those are all the parts that came with the new kit. We'll go through them as I put things back in. And then I'm going to take the kickstart mechanism out of this one and put it into this one. And that is just, you just whack it. Well, I've got this rubber mallet. Take that out and that'll give us a chance to look at the damage here. You can see this is supposed to be a nice sharp, sharp, uh, tooth and it's all chunked away from 22,000 miles of kickstarting and it's got a rubber seal here that you want to inspect and replace if needed that'll keep the oil in your transmission in the original inner cover we've got the non-sealed bearings here you can see the balls hanging out there and that means that you can't use oil in there because it'll, it'll sneak out but we're going to use this sealed bearing to replace it in the new cover and then we'll be able to run oil in the transmission. Here's a close-up look at the parts that came in the kit. Some springs and various parts and then this is the Kickstart Paul replacement kit I got with the, you can see the shiny new Kickstart Paul with a good tooth on it. And they gave me about six million washers in here and gas, round gaskets. I don't know what those are for but we're not going to be using all those. I don't know why they gave me those. All right, so we're going to press this bearing into the case over there, into this hole. And to do that, I've built a bearing press out of a bolt. I've got a bolt with some washers on it, so we'll use this as a press. Now, you want to make sure that the washers are as big as the outside of the bearing. You don't want to be pressing on the inside like that. It goes in like that, and then through the case, and then on the other side of the case, another couple of washers and a nut. But if you're doing it, uh, on a different application and there's you want to protect the metal you can put a neoprene washer in between like that and of course we're going to use some hot fire we're going to heat up the hole so that it is just a little bit uh, bigger and easier to press in than if it was cooled put the bearing in the right way around like that Try to get it in straight to begin with so you've got a good start. You put the nut on the back. I've got blocks of wood in the vise so I'm not beating up the metal on the actual case. And that's as far as it goes down. I'm looking at the old one and the old one sticks out a little bit too. So I think we're good. Voila, there you go, new bearing. Alright, we've run into a little problem with the Kickstarter. That is, the hole on the original piece is just a little bit bigger than the one on the new one. So on the new case, it just won't go in there. I'm going to have to have somebody machine it just a teeny bit bigger. It absolutely, positively doesn't want to go in. It almost goes in, but I don't want to break it. Alright, next we're going to do the shifter actuator shaft bushing. You can see it's it's tapered on one end so we're going to put it in from outside so this would be the outside of the bike and that would be towards the engine with the taper down and make the tapered part flush with the inside of the case so I'm going to use my bolt and washer method to just push it down in there again you could heat it up if you wanted to to make the hole a little bigger I didn't heat it up in this case and it's going in pretty easy all right, so there's the finished product. You can see it's flush on the inside and it's sticking out a little bit on the outside. These are the lengths of the bolts in the cover. Top left, top right, countersunk, and then bottom left, bottom right. All right, now on to the brake side. So the original brakes were installed here 
and fortunately for you this is easy. Um, Royal Enfield has left the original brake lug on here and it is threaded so you just take the piece in the kit, thread it in there and then put your new brake lever on it. So it's got long threads on one side that go in there and then a short threaded piece on the other side here that you're going to use to hold the lever itself on. I didn't get a washer but I'd expect you'd want to use a washer in there. So we just thread that in here. So that goes in nicely. Now there's a room for a lock nut on the back of it. What makes me a little nervous is how close it is to the chain there coming out the back here. So I'm going to put the nut on the back and hope it doesn't destroy my chain. So I'm going to put a little bit of thread locker in the lock nut that I put back here. And you see how close it is to the chain, but you got to remember that my bike is, is jacked up right now on the center stand and the rear wheel is in the air. So when I'm riding, the chain will be up higher, so it shouldn't cause too many problems with clearance. So there is a spot on the top of the brake lever, the new one, that for the grease fitting and uh, didn't come with the kit so I'm going to have to buy one and screw it in there. For now I'm just going to put some grease on the shaft here and install the lever. There we go. I'm finding that the brake lever is whacking into my foot peg so I'm going to adjust the adjuster, adjust the nut in the back here brake rod adjuster get those coordinated so it's at the right height there so I'll put this nut on here to keep it from flying off so on the brake rod there's this little deal that hooks on to the spring for the stoplight switch and then behind it there's a washer and behind that is a cotter pin um, mine is bent see how it's bent here I don't know if that's bent from some terrible accident or if that's how it's supposed to be I've seen pictures of some that are not bent and I'm afraid it's going to bang into my frame here. And you'll feel some spring tension on the back wheel before it gets to the hole, which is okay. That'll that you want to have feel some spring tension on it, but not have it with the brakes on all the time. All right, there you go. You can see the whole arrangement. So I push the brakes. It's adjusted so that the brakes come on. There's a little bit of pedal play. I'll probably fine tune that once I get it out on the road. The brake switch spring is loose. I've got it on the middle setting. And then when I push down, you can see it, it pulls the switch. So that is perfect. I found that the, the pedal was, was shaking side to side more than I'd like. So I took one of these little fiber washers that came with the kit and put it in on this side. It's goes around the outside it goes around the outside of the bolt and just kind of fills in the gap so it 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 doesn't shake side to side so when i pull the the brake lever towards me in a way now it's it's nice and tight and it's just sitting in there kind of filling up the gap all right so on the kickstart shaft you can see what's wrong with the kickstart pole here it's been chunked off so a good one is going to look like this. So we're just going to replace this broken one with this good one. Now when you slide, it just slides out, but when you slide it out, there's a little plunger here with a spring behind it. So if you're not careful, that's going to shoot across your garage and disappear forever. So you kind of depress it and then slide it out and then just slowly release it. And you can see there's your plunger. Uh, flat side down and round side goes up against the kickstart pole. And the little spring is in the hole there. So to put the new piece in, there's a little groove on the back of it that rides on the plunger. So you want to put groove side down and just slide it in like this. And that is groovy. So there you go. That solves the kickstart problem. And then we just put it back together and it'll work. There's also a little rubber gasket here. So I'm going to, looks fine, a rubber seal here that goes around the shaft. This one looks fine, but I have a new one I'm just going to put on to replace it. This is the shaft that does the kickstarting. So that's going to go in here with your kickstart ball that's new. You'll have to push it down to get inside of this gear and it just goes in like that. And then this is what actually does the gear shifting. You're going to have an old one that's left over from when you first took it apart. Uh, looks pretty much the same, but I've been told it's different. So what you want to do is just put the new one in when you're putting the case on and it has to grab onto this little lever here. That's where the gear actually gets shifted, like click, click, click. So you want to make sure that 
the rounded end here is over this lever here. So it's grabbing onto that right about in this position when you put the case on. Looking at the inside of the case here, that's where the kickstart stopper is. Mine came with it installed, so if you don't have this on the inside of the, uh, the case, then you have to take that off of your old one and put it on there. And it comes with plugs, so you want to locate your top plug, your bottom drain plug, and your filler hole one. So I'm going to put those in with the little fiber gasket that came with the kit. Alright, so here's how the kickstarter works. You can see this plate in here inside of the cover holds the kickstart pawl down and then when I kickstart it the pawl comes out and grabs onto those gears and spins the engine and then the spring pulls it back so that the kickstart pawl is out of the way. And of course you want to have it in this position when you reassemble it. That way it's not going to bang into the gears. It's going to be down low and out of the way. You can reuse the original bolts on the top and bottom but there was one that was countersunk on the original case and this one doesn't have a countersink in it so I suppose you could drill a countersink into it but what I did was just bought another bolt that with a small round head to keep it out of the way of things and I'm going to use that just making sure it's the same length and same thread. All right now for reassembly I've got some gasket material on here non-hardening gasket material along with the gasket and I'm going to make sure that this deal here grabs onto its little handle here and kind of push it together. I've got the bolts in here, short bolts on the top and long bolts, short bolts on the top and long bolts on the bottom here, and then one in the middle. Now on this part, you want to look inside the crack. So I look down here and move it around until I see it grab onto the shifter shaft. Peeking through the hole, I can see it's in place. Now this is going to be tight on this bearing, whatever the hell this is. Um, I'm going to have to kind of pound that along using the socket because it's a super tight fit. So I'm going to take a socket and put it right here. Don't pound it too hard. And then a rubber mallet and just kind of get her, get her into place. Make sure my bolts are still holding my gaskets on. Again, turning this one to make sure that it's still on the shifter, and it is. Now I tighten up the bolts. I don't know how much torque to put on them, but they weren't that tight to begin with, and I know that the metal we're, we're screwing into is pretty weak. So I'm just going to give them, make them tight, but not super tight. We're going to put this nut on, so let's take a look at the the parts involved. So you've got a sort of fat washer here. So the flat side goes towards the engine and it has a groove in it. So we want that groove to be consistent with the little groove that's in this shaft here. And then this washer has a little pin in it that goes into that groove on the shaft. So just like that. And then this nut has a flat side and a tapered side so we're going to put the flat side towards the bike and it is opposite thread so turn it counterclockwise as if you were unscrewing it to tighten it then we're going to get a torque wrench on it and tighten it up to between 35 and 50 pounds of torque i've got the transmission in gear you can grab the gear shifter with a wrench and clunk it into gear if you're in neutral so you put it into gear then you hold down the rear brake with your foot on the other side of the bike and torque this up to 35 to 50 pounds of torque. And once you've got your nut tight, you want to pry up these little flaps on the washer to, to lock it down. All right, so now that I've got that put back together, we're just going to hold the decompression lever down and crank the kickstarter a few times just to see if anything sounds weird in the, uh, in the clutch area. Oh, that sounds reasonably happy. All right, so the kickstart spring is going to go on here. Now the tricky part, and I might need an assistant for this, is that I've got to bring this all the way around and then anchor it down with the bolt that holds the cover on. So this cover that goes over the bearing that reaches over to the other side to the clutch, you might accidentally put this on upside down, and if you do, you won't be able to shift gears. You can see there's a little indentation up here, and that's going to go to your left. 
there's a longer bolt and a shorter bolt. So the longer bolt is going to hold that spring on. So it goes on here like this with the indentation here. And then this bolt, you're going to have to have somebody crank this around to get that up to here. And there's quite a lot of tension on it because it's got to actually return your Kickstarter. So once you've got this bolt, this once you've got the spring cranked around to here, you have somebody hold the tension on it. And then you make sure you don't cross thread it because it'll be real easy to put it in crooked because of all the tension on the spring. So that's got to go straight in with the tension being held on the spring for you. So I have proven that this can be done by one superhuman extraordinary man like myself. Um, I used a paper towel to keep the spring from cutting up my finger too bad and I just cranked it over, put the bolt through it once I got the spring over to the hole and then just made sure I was cranking it in tight. So now I just need to torque it down. All right, now I'm going to fill it up with gear oil and just make sure that it holds oil at this point. So there's a plug at the bottom that I have tightened up and then there's a plug down here on the end. So what you want to do is take the side plug out and take the top plug out. Fill it up at the top until it starts running out of the side and that's how you know it's full. And then put the side plug in and put the top plug in. Now some people recommend drilling a hole in it to vent it. Um, I'm not doing that just because I'm paranoid about this getting all full of full of gear oil and I'm looking at some of the stuff like this and I figure that's probably enough of a vent for air to pass through if it does need to breathe a little bit. All right, time to put the rest of the shifter back in place. So this plate is going to go in there. I'm going to put a new spring in it. So the spring just stretches over it like this. I'm going to put grease on a lot of different parts of this thing just because it's going to be bumping up against other pieces of metal. So grease for peace is the policy. We put that in here. That's going to go on there like that. Then you can see when we put our, our shifter lever in there, that's going to catch onto this spring and that spring is going to be what returns it when you shift gears. So this is held on by two of these special bolts. The long and fat part of the bolt along with a washer go in here. And the old part has a bit of a ring from where the washer was when I took it apart. So I'm going to put it exactly in the same spot as it was before. Hopefully then I won't need to do too much adjusting of my shifting once this is done. Now this, the shift mechanism I'm going to take apart and clean out and grease. So just take that top plate off of it. And you can see it's, it's fairly dirty, old, and greasy. So I'm just going to clean it up, put the top part back on, and then we'll pop it back in the motorcycle. All right, so that has now been greased up. This kit came with a new spring. So the new spring goes on here like this. So now I've got this greasy bundle here ready to go on. So we're going to take our shifter lever, hook it up so that it's caught in the spring on the back side here, and then the fork is going to grab onto this pin here, which I should put some grease on as well. And I'm running into a clearance issue. This is the bushing that I pounded in there earlier in this beautiful video. So the bushing is sticking out too much and it's it's pushing this ratchety thing out so that I can't bolt the plate down on top of it because it, it rests on here. So what I need to do is hammer this in just a little bit more. I don't really want to take it apart and try to press it. So I'm just going to try to put a, a socket on it and pound it down. Oh, genius. I think that worked. And there's plenty of room on the back side, so it's not going to bang into anything inside the case. So now, put this mother scratcher on, lock it into the spring, into the shifter, set our plate on top of it. Yeah, that is going to play nice and lay flat and bolt down proper. So. There you go. When you put that bushing in about five or ten minutes ago in the video, just make it sticking out just a tiny bit and test fit this on it before you put it put it together and call it done. Now at this point it's advisable to put the shifter lever on here and try and shift it through all the gears. And you kind of have to roll it back and forth while you're shifting it to get it to work because the transmission has to be turning in order for it to uh, shift gears. So, And I don't want to start it up because I don't have the pipe on it. And it's up on a skateboard ramp box. So what I'm just going to do is hope that it works and put it back together. But if you're doing this at home, roll it back and forth, try and run it through all the gears before you put everything back on top. 
All right, now we're gonna put this in this in here. This is um, your shift cable, your clutch cable hooks up to it, pulls it, and then this pushes on the clutch actuator rod and, and uh, makes the clutch work. So this plate is what holds it. So it goes in here. There's a grease fitting on the top of it. So you pump grease into it. The grease comes out that hole and keeps it greasy. So it just goes in there like that. Put this on top and put the bolts down. I'm going to put some grease on it and grease in it. And then uh, seal it up. And put some grease on the ball too. Alright, so now we just take our clutch cable. Thread it through the back. Then we're going to thread that through this little grabber deal. And then put the case on. There we go. So now that's grabbed onto the grabber. Put it over here. Everything should line up. Easy peasy. So I'll just put the bolts back in. Step the long bolts go on the front side of the bike. And the shorties go on the back. Or the back and the bottom. Alright, now I've put the little peekaboo covers on it and whatever this is back on it. Trying to get this in the same position it was in before. I'm not sure what it does. And then uh, making sure that the clutch works properly. You can see it move here. So I've, I've set the clutch cable tension so it looks just right to me. All right, so it's time to put the neutral finder back on. But if you can see, the hole, there's more hole on this side than there is on this side of the shifter. So what that means is I put this in here. That works okay, but then when I go to put this in, it's just not going to fit. So the guy in India that's in charge of drilling this hole, drilled it too far this way. I can either kind of try to grind it wide. I also had to have this hole machined because it was, or the hole on the inside case I had to have machined because it was the wrong size, but this one's in the wrong place. So I'm not sure what to do with it yet, but I'm going to skip that. We'll do that later. Hopefully the kit that you buy is of better quality than the one that I bought. But if your hole is the right size, then you want to put this in, then you put this in. You can see there's a longer part and a shorter part. Longer part goes, goes towards the motorcycle. And then there's a washer. Goes on here. There's a spring. There's a cap there. So you go cap, spring, washer, and then the two metal parts. And then there's a bolt here. And that goes in there. The bolt goes in there holds it in there and you adjust its lever with this it's level with this thing it rests on there all that's left for me to do is put the shifter on so the shifter goes on the big one here i'm going to adjust it to the right level for my foot probably right about there and then torque that down and then your kickstarter goes just on top of that there back at the level it used to be which i believe probably right about there all right, so the exhaust pipe goes in the hole. One bolt here, one bolt here. If you're running a muffler, bolt, bolt right there on your muffler and bolt the muffler clamp back up onto the exhaust pipe. All right, there you go. That's the shifter side. And that is the brake side. All right, so that's about as far as I can get you. Sorry, I'm doing laundry about the noise. Um, so what I don't know is, is the hole on the outer cover wrong or is the hole on the inner cover wrong? And I'm not sure how I'm going to determine which is which, so I'm kind of stuck and this is probably going to sit for a few months while I figure it out. I certainly don't want to take it all apart and put it back together, put all that stuff back into it. So I don't know, frustrating. But if you got good parts that are the right size and shape, then it should just go together easily for you. Good luck.